How's it going guys? Today I want to give you guys my five tips that I wish I knew before I started programming back in college. So to give you guys a little bit of background, I graduated from NYU in 2017 and I studied computer science. So before college I had never written a line of code, so I wrote my first line of code in the fall semester of my freshman year at NYU. So I thought this video might be helpful for you guys because I definitely wish that I had someone tell me these five things before I started programming back in college. So the first tip that I have for you guys is to make sure that you actually set realistic expectations out of what you're gonna get by just starting to write code. And I think setting realistic expectations and a realistic timeline for what you're gonna learn and how fast is super important because I think things in the media nowadays like the show Mr. Robot, uh, Silicon Valley, or even you know movies like The Social Network kind of portray this idea that you can uh, stay up late at night, drink beer, write some code, and kind of become Mark Zuckerberg, and I'm not saying that that's not true, but I'm just saying that that's definitely not everyone. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you manage your expectations for how long it might take you to learn these things. And if you want to build the next Facebook, if you guys have an app idea, if you guys want to build a website, that's awesome. But just understand that it might not come overnight. My next tip for you guys is to make sure that you stick to one language and learn that language super well. So when I first started coding back in college, I always thought that for some reason I should really try and have a breadth of knowledge. So I should try and learn all the languages that I could simultaneously. And I, I really, really recommend not doing that. And the reason why I don't recommend that is because a lot of the concepts that you'll learn in one language will be extremely transferable to basically any other language that you use. There's some very, very fundamental concepts in computer science that kind of encourages best practices in terms of programming, ways to style your code, different architectures and patterns to follow. And those are pretty, pretty uniform throughout all these other languages. So although the syntax might change between something like Java and Python, the way that you're gonna structure your code and the practices that you're gonna follow will pretty much stay the same. So I definitely recommend that you guys try and go depth first and not breadth first, and you guys really try and make sure that you are hammering down on one language, really learning the fundamentals of that language, as well as all the other fundamental concepts that are involved in computer science for that language specifically. My next tip for you guys to understand before you start getting into coding is that most of coding is actually just thinking. And I know that sounds weird because all these different outlets portray coding as really just smashing on a keyboard, churning out a ton of code, and then making a lot of money, but that's not really how it works in the industry and in real life. Oftentimes when you're actually solving some sort of problem and you're solving a bug, or maybe you're finishing work on a feature or a ticket for your product, that's not how it works, right? The majority of the work is actually just you thinking and wrestling about the problem. And then when it comes to actually writing the code, writing the code is kind of trivial. Writing code is actually a lot like writing a book. And the reason for that is because you're not necessarily sure how long that task is gonna take. So when an author's writing a book, there are so, so many drafts that take place before the book is actually published. And before the actual writing even takes place, I'm sure, at least for essays, and I'm sure other books as well, there's tons of different notes, collaborative brainstorming sessions, as well as different drafts and outlines that are created. And coding in a lot of ways is actually very, very similar. So when you're actually going to approach a problem, you don't just dive in and write code. You really think about the problem at hand. Maybe you propose different ways to actually solve the problem. You probably bounce some ideas off your coworkers. And then ultimately you go in with a specific direction and say, this is how we're gonna solve the problem. So once you actually come up with how you're gonna approach that problem, writing the code kind of becomes trivial, right? You know, even if it's 500 lines of code, you might have to write, Luckily, you have this nice designed outline or very strategic plan with how to move forward and how to ultimately render that problem obsolete. So that's to say that most of the work is actually front loaded. A lot of times you're just kind of sitting and thinking about the problem. And once you've wrestled with it, understood it, and you know how to approach it, solving the problem really becomes trivial. My next tip for you guys, and I think that this is one of the most important qualities to have as an engineer. So I think it's important that you guys think about this before you jump in, is to make sure that you're patient. And that's because programming can actually be extremely, extremely frustrating and aggravating. A lot of coding is not only thinking, but a lot of coding is also reading. It's reading about errors that you're getting. It's reading about endless Stack Overflow posts where people have the same problem. It's going down a rabbit hole of threads online where seemingly no one has the same problem. But lo and behold, oftentimes you either figure out the problem on your own and you're missing a comma or some sort of semicolon or you misspelled a word or a variable or you actually find someone who has that exact same problem, or you add some print statements and you debug. But 
Either way, somehow you oftentimes end up arriving at a solution, figuring out the problem and moving forward. But just remember that it's not all fun, right? Sometimes you actually go down that rabbit hole, you have to search all those different errors that you might be getting, and engineering definitely takes time because of that. So my final tip for you guys today, and I think that this is honestly the most important one, and this is the one that I try and remind myself of nowadays the most often, and that's that building things is better than reading things. And at least this is my opinion, but I think that I've definitely learned more about coding and engineering and being a software engineer in the real industry more by building things and actually doing activities, writing code, as opposed to reading things. So a lot of people, when they actually get into coding, I think they're very tempted to start buying textbooks and they think that they need to read an entire textbook before they start, but I don't think that's necessarily true. I think personally that building and doing is a lot better than just reading. I think that it'll stick with you more and I think that by actively learning something, right, typing on the computer, declaring variables, writing functions, using conditionals, executing for loops, I think will go a lot, a lot further than you guys just picking up some sort of Java textbook and reading it. I think that reading is a great way to reinforce the things that you did actively to learn, right? So I think reading is very passive. So I think ideally, if you guys are really interested in getting started coding, I would definitely recommend doing both. So I would recommend trying to do hands-on exercises, writing programs, writing classes, writing different things to do stuff in code, and then reinforce that active learning by doing things that are more passive, maybe at night before bed, like reading a textbook or reading some sort of blog article on engineering at night. So guys, those are the five things that I wish I knew before I started programming. I hope that you guys use these pieces of information to jump in and start coding yourselves. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor and leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time.